Hey everybody out there in TV land, Eddie here, bringing back another video, yet part two in our how to use Remind to get some listings. So before we begin, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I'm always here to help any way I can. My information is always in the description. Feel free to call, text, or email anytime. I get agents on a regular basis contacting me and asking all sorts of questions. I'm actually a realtor, full-time realtor here in Broward County, that's in Southeast Florida, and I also service West Palm Beach County. So if you're a buyer or seller or a renter looking for some assistance, feel free to call, text, or email my information. Once again, is below. So let's get into part two. So in part one, we talked about farming. I went into that a little bit. You can check that video out. Now in part two, we're gonna talk about how to use Remind, the Remind application. Once you've identified your farming area, to start gathering up all the information, then we're gonna go from there. So let's jump straight over to Remind so we can take a look at their platform. So we're here in the Remind application. Before we get to Remind, I just have to remind you that the Remind application or tool, whatever you wanna call it, I act, gain access through my MLS, through um, what the MLS on my side in the Greater Fort Lauderdale allows me to have access to. So I just wanna make you aware of that. Um, because you'll have to reach out to your MLS or your association, see if they have it. If they don't have it, you can also go to Remind directly, which is, I believe, Remind.com URLs right here, um, and you're able to gain access that way as well. But I recommend checking with your association first, and if your association doesn't have it, be sure to reach out to them and say, hey, why the heck don't you have Remind? And then I'm sure everybody at Remind will be more than happy to set that up for them. So before we get into the Mind application, I need you to get into the mindset of what I'm thinking exactly. So I found this really cool graphic that explains what we're gonna be talking about here in Remind. Remind is simply one cog in the greater machine, okay? The first step's identifying the farming area, which we talked about in part one. This step is about how to use Remind, but I wanted to include this in this video so that you get an idea of where I'm going with this. Even though this is predominantly focused on SEO, I want you to think of this as leads are coming in, okay? meaning you have some sort of a traffic source, meaning you either have a direct mail marketing piece out there, maybe a pay per click campaign through Facebook or YouTube or Google AdWords or YouTube ads, or you have printed material like in a newsletter, a newspaper, you do direct mail marketing like a postcard or a door hang or something, okay? You get the leads coming in through that traffic. Once the traffic starts flowing, you start getting the leads. Now, the leads can then turn into prospects. This transition occurs when you begin to qualify them appropriately, okay? And then obviously you need to convert them. Once the conversion takes place, obviously you're gonna get a business inquiry or maybe an online conversation during these steps. And then obviously you're gonna make money in the end, hopefully if the property is priced to sell or you're looking working with a buyer that is prepared to buy, which I've mentioned in other videos. So keep in mind this form and you can type into Google, I think I typed in something like um, a nurturing campaign or a real estate nurturing campaign. It'll give you all these sorts of graphics to help you understand you're moving them through a funnel, okay? From beginning their initial contact, where you're finding them, getting the traffic, speaking with them, making sure they meet, you know, what a appropriate lead would be able to, to, to accomplish. Like, are they really ready to buy? Are they really ready to sell? Are they really ready to rent? And then obviously the conversions thereafter. So let's lower this down. Now are the Remind application. Here in the Remind application, you know, once again, I've told you guys, be patient with it. It's loading a lot of information at one time, and we're going to jump straight to the area that we want to move to, okay? So over here, I'm in Discover. You click Discover, and here I'm going to go straight to Margate, Florida, okay? I'm going to type in the city. Now, it should, in search, find it. There is Margate, Florida, and now I'm going to click it. Once I click it, obviously the links are going to all, um, excuse me, they're going to all move me to that particular area. So once again, give it a couple seconds. There we go. It's outlined that specific city. Like in the previous video, we've decided to mar to market or, or to navigate or to research specifically in the market area. Now I'm going to go after what buyers or excuse me, what listings or people, how can I identify listings? Okay. So first things first, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit using my mouse cursor, just to zoom in a little bit. You can use a plus and minus arrows here. Once again, you gotta give it a couple seconds to reset, okay? So zoom in a little further. There we go, perfect. All right, you're gonna to begin to see the blue dots appear as everything begins to cycle through. Now, I don't know, I've never, I haven't tested this before making this video, so I don't know exactly what's gonna pop up, but we're going to uh, use this poly uh, polygon shape we're going to come in here and we're going to draw what, how the area went identi identified, like in my farming video. I'm going to use the exact same area so you guys can see exactly 
the way I would do it, okay? Now, once you select this particular area, you're gonna see the results change as well. Now I can get rid of cities marketing here because I've already selected the area I wanna focus in on. Now I have the polygon. Now it has active listings, okay? I'm gonna get rid of active because I don't really care about the status particularly right now. Now I do need to zoom in. It's telling me to zoom in in order to see what's out there. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna to begin to tweak with the options. Let's call them the, the different choices you have here on how you can identify potential listings. This is one way to do it, okay? You're gonna to have to do your own research and have to dig deeper to understand how this can actually work. Now the starred, uh, stars you're seeing here are people that I've already selected in my marketing campaigns, and that's why they're starred. That's what the star stands for, okay? So we're gonna go off market. Now in doing so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the left-hand side, and I'm gonna pick home equity. When I look at home equity, I like to look at properties that have at least, let's say, twenty to thirty thousand. Let's let's say at least a minimum of thirty thousand dollars in home equity. Now the Remind system is using multiple uh, sources of information, county records, the MLS, all this transactional information to gain this insight. That's why it's there. Okay, so a minimum of thirty thousand dollars, and I'm going to press apply. When I press apply, you're going to begin to see some of the blue dots disappear, some of them stay, so on and so forth. You can see, well, see they disappear. And we can see here that the top has been modified, 30,000 or more. The reason why I checked 30,000 or more is because I want to know that they have equity in their home. Once again, that could be a very big motivator for someone to sell. And you can change that number, okay? Time of home ownership. Having been a real estate professional for over eight years, I know that the home ownership, usually people are selling every three to five years. So I'm going to say a minimum of home ownership of three years, okay? And then I'm going to press apply. Once again, with Remind, you have to give it time. It's gathering all this information and it's beginning to tweak everything. Okay, so you need to give it, give it some, give it some time. Another thing you can do here is moving down the line, you can go sell score. Now, after talking to the individuals at Remind, the sell score is a accumulation of different information. Okay, now I would use it in addition to the different factors we just put. So I'm going to put high sell score and I'm going to press apply. Okay, now you're going to see probably a lot of them disappear. Okay. There we go. So now we're down to 34 results. You see all the little blue dots. This is a solid place to start, okay? You should also go, my bad, you should also go to building type. And in building type, you can then click on residential or single family homes. For our sake of our argument, we're gonna go single family because that's what we are focusing in on. Single family. Now we're down to 27 results, okay? So we got 27 results here. Now, this is what you do next. Once you begin, once you've set up this, you're looking at off-market properties, create a polygon of your farm area, which you've identified in part one. You have home equity of at least 30,000 and whatever the home equity amount you want a minimum base, you can add that there. Then you have home ownership time, I would say at a minimum three years, sell score high, building type single family, okay? Once you've had that, you just simply click on the little blue dot, watch what happens. Sometimes you gotta zoom in just a little bit more, but it should pick it up. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, let's zoom in just a little bit more. And I'm just gonna show you this with a couple because once I show it to you with a couple, you're gonna begin to understand exactly what I'm doing. Now, once you've identified the particular uh, properties you're going to begin to farm, market to, all right, which part three is about creating that marketing piece, how you're gonna market to them, then um, it, you're gonna have to create a spreadsheet with this information. I recommend using Google Drive create your spreadsheet, or you can just simply open an Excel or a sheet of paper, okay? So I'm gonna click here. Now, once I click here, obviously we can see the properties being mentioned here. These are the two properties here. And I'm gonna click this one. It looks like, up. Oh, this one's the one. So I'm gonna click that one. I'm just gonna open up another screen. In this screen, you're gonna see a ton of different information to help you identify the contact information for this particular owner. Now, the different parts of information you're going to want to gather, and let's jump over straight over to our handy dandy notepad so you guys can see everything that I'm doing, is you want the property address, okay? Next thing you want is the owner names or name. Next thing, mailing address. Next thing, really, that's really what you want, but you could, you could include email or phone number if it's included, okay? and whatever other information. I would say at the very least is what you're gonna need. So when I clicked on this particular property, opened up this other window, 
and it tells me all these different factors here. Now, we could create another video explaining how to read this particular form, but just basics. Estimated value is 226,000. Estimated net equity, meaning 226,000, meaning they don't have a mortgage. You could use that as a, as a search feature in your list on Remind. They've owned the property for 3.9 years. All right, that's a, a heck of a long time. Scrolling down goes into public record. Structure, utilities, I'm telling you there's tons of information, but we're gonna go down straight to the bottom because I wanna see a couple of information. I wanna see some information real quick. Okay, perfect. So we see here that we have the owner's names, it says below are contacts who have historical connection to the property. Now you see the different names down here. You can also see the emails included here and phone numbers. BNC do not call list, so do not call them, okay? Now scrolling back to the top, since this is loaded, once again, you gotta give it time, you're gonna see a couple of things that I wanna point out to you, okay? So coming down here, let's go to, we have the address here. I'm looking for the mailing address, let's see. Okay, there we go, perfect, 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 perfect. You see how in the key stats it says occupancy status, occupied, meaning that's a homeowner, homeowner occupied property. Maybe it has a tenant in there, it'll let you know that as well. Corporate ownership, no. Absentee owner, no. Mailing address is the same one as the address. That's why they need to be two separate columns because sometimes the mailing address, even if it's their second home and they don't rent it out, will not be the same, okay? So check the mailing address. And then once again, down on the bottom, we saw where their contact information sits. Let's go to the bottom, there we go. We can see also their mortgages, values, where the loan is from, all that kind of stuff. We can see the warranty deed, we can see the seller, and we can see the buyer. So it looks like Caroline is the Caroline, right? Caroline O'Malley, or yeah, O'Malley. Caroline O'Malley is the homeowner right there. And there's Joseph and Daniel. So this is the main one right here. You can see the buy score, but we can go in that different, at a different time. So let's take one more so you guys can see exactly the information you're looking for, okay? So let's go over here, the, the, the second one on the list right here. Look, and you can add this to track all, and, and you can make this very complex, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so you guys can understand the different informa the information you're supposed to be looking for. So remember, once you've farmed the area, then you come into Remind and begin to use those tools and assets. You want to, once again, as this tab begins to load, let's look at the top real quick so you guys can take a moment of it. And once again, it can take a little bit, of, a little while to load because of how much information is being loaded at one time. So waiting for it to load. Remember, property address, owner's name, mailing address, email, phone number, and you see the stats I used. Off market, polygon to select your area, home equity, at least 30,000, home ownership time over three years, or three years or more, sell score high, and then single family homes. Jumping over to this, let's see if it produced the, um, the remind. There we go. The sheet is coming up. Perfect. Remind has a plethora of different tools that you can use to help you with your marketing efforts. But once again, this is a series about how to use Remind to help you get listings, which I've been asked for multiple times. So this is actually a distressed property, maybe a foreclosure, maybe an REO. This is off the market. Here's the address, estimated equity, years owned, owners, Joseph Thomas. This is a perfect example for you guys to see what I'm talking about. Watch this. So the this particular property on the key stats, it's owner occupied. The mailing address is the same as the uh, at home address, which is great. But there's a piece of document that I saw right here. There we go. Distress, document type, list of pendants, recording date, 3-28-2019. That means this house is in pre-foreclosure, okay? So you can begin to understand these facts. They have all types of information so you can understand what's going on here. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, content information, home, and content information. So anyways, this is how to set up the Remind, use the Remind tool in order to help you get listings. So let's jump out of here and move on to uh, Move back to the regular video. So we've taken time to understand how to use the Remind application in order to help you find listings to market to. So step one, we saw in part one, farming. Part two, 
how to dive into the Remind application to help you find listings. And now let's move over to part three. So I'll catch you guys soon on part three. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to give that subscribe button a click. And if I can ever help, if you're looking to buy, sell, or rent, or if you have questions being a real estate professional yourself, feel free to call, text, or email. I'll catch you guys later. Hope you have a great day.